Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me and today I wanted to talk about Pinterest. So I love Pinterest. Pinterest launched at the same time approximately that Humble Bee and Me did and so we have really gone on this great big DIY skincare and cosmetics adventure together. Pinterest is an amazing place to find inspiration, to store and save things that you want to try. I'm a really visual person so it's so much easier for me to go through what is effectively now my bookmarks list and find things with visuals instead of with just like text titles and a favorites list. So I love Pinterest but I have noticed that there's a lot of really dodgy DIY skincare stuff on Pinterest and a lot of it gets repinned a lot so it's really really popular and highly visible because it's very sort of very simple and very appealing but I also really want you guys to be safe when you're doing your DIY so I thought we would talk about some of the sort of myths and misconceptions and just sort of maybe like less than awesome stuff that gets spread around Pinterest like it's a really 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 good idea and chat about maybe why it's not or why it's not the greatest idea or how you could improve on it. So let's dive in. One of the biggest issues that I see with recipes that I find on Pinterest is that they are either completely unpreserved, impossible to preserve, or are preserved with things that aren't preservatives. And rather than go into this at length here because this video is already getting wildly out of hand lengthwise, I'm going to refer you to my myths and misconceptions about preservatives video. It tackles pretty much every sort of myth and misconception I've ever seen about preservatives around the internet. So if you wanna learn more about preservatives, go check it out. <laughs> Some of the easier recipes on Pinterest really confuse me. I remember seeing a pin for, it was like the world's most amazing body butter. And I was like, I have to get it on this. I love body butter and the world's most amazing body butter. Like absolutely click through. And the recipe was like, go to the dollar store and buy a lotion, no specific lotion, just lotion and petroleum jelly, and then mix them together. Uh, why? That just, I can't imagine that anybody is mixing these things together and being like, yes, this is the most amazing thing I've ever put on my skin. And there are lots of recipes like this where it's sort of combine like this lotion and then you can like water it down, take this and this and A and B and different store-bought complete things. Uh, aside from that being quite an unsafe practice because you are taking products with varying preservative needs and systems and mixing them together and pretty much always you're going to be creating something that is not going to be shelf stable. It also just seems kind of gross and also kind of defeats the point. I think most people get into DIYing stuff because they're trying to avoid certain ingredients or because they just want to do it themselves. And so if you are buying your stuff from the dollar store and mixing it together, I, I don't think you're going to be wowed by your end results. I think you're probably going to think that you wasted some money on a trip to the dollar store. So I don't know, just, Mixing together a bunch of store-bought stuff to make something brand new is not the way to do it. If you really want to get into DIY, follow like a real recipe with raw ingredients rather than sort of just like mixing together some stuff that you bought. Something that I read a lot that would be really scary if it was true, so thankfully it's not, is that our skin absorbs everything that we put on it. To a degree it does, yes, but it's very, very rare for something to actually make its way into your bloodstream because our skin is an absolutely amazing barrier. It does a wonderful job of protecting us from the outside world, from the elements. I mean, if you kind of think about it logically, it starts to be like, oh yes. You think when you take a bath, are you just like completely thirst quenched for the next three days because you know, you just soaked up all that water because you put it on your skin and boom, bam, you're hydrated. No, <laughs> be kind of useful sometimes though. Um, you'd have to be very dehydrated before you like got married or something, went to a fancy dress and wanted to look nice, you'd be very bloated. Uh, or say like you put on some body butter and now you don't need dinner because you just put like two tablespoons of straight fat and you're feeling pretty pretty full on all that, that straight fat that you spread all over your skin. No, it doesn't, doesn't happen that way. Our skin is really, really wonderful at protecting us. There are absolutely things that can make their way into your bloodstream, but these things are typically very carefully formulated pharmaceuticals that are, you know, like it's hard. It's hard to design something that actually gets into your bloodstream through your skin. So this isn't something that you need to be really, really, really worried about. Absolutely continue to do your research, but you don't need to worry about all of your ingredients being food or food grade because your skin 
doesn't actually like eat ingredients like your mouth does. So you don't have to be that concerned about everything in general, which is great. Skin is cool. <laughs> Something else I see a lot of is a lot of what I presume to be very well-meaning, but quite sensationalized sort of fear-mongering pieces on stuff that's toxic and dangerous. I find that these infographics typically never really make any mention of dose and have done a really, really good job of cherry picking information to make whatever chemical they're looking at sound really, really, really scary and dangerous no matter the amount that it's used in. But everything has a lethal dose. You can have too much water, too much oxygen, too much spinach, and those things, while typically considered very safe, can absolutely make you sick and or kill you when used in large enough amounts. And this is true of everything that we use in our body products. Many, many things like essential oils are very, very potent, should be used in small amounts. Doesn't mean that they are inherently toxic and dangerous. It just means that you shouldn't take a bath in them. And that's true of a lot of sort of the more chemically sounding things that I find often get sort of held out as this like, kill the beast kind of uh, really fear-based uh, educational tactics. Whenever you see something and it's just labeled as toxic and scary and dangerous, please do more research. There is a chance that this is absolutely something that you don't want on your skin, but there's also a chance that it's something that is perfectly safe or even beneficial at small amounts. So I highly recommend that whenever you see something that's telling you that a certain ingredient is without a doubt dangerous under all circumstances and in all situations and at all usage rates that you do a little bit more research because usually there's more to the story than that. Everything has a unsafe dose, but that's not how we should judge every ingredient. I see a ton of food-based makeup recipes on Pinterest and as somebody who has spent hundreds of hours developing homemade cosmetic recipes, I have found that these recipes uniformly are Hmm, mediocre at best all the way to like, wow, what a waste of cornstarch. So I actually made a video sort of showing you how food makeup compares to makeup made from real makeup ingredients. So I will link to that in the description box below and I highly recommend you check it out because if you want to make real makeup and have good results and be really sort of impressed and actually enjoy wearing your cosmetics and instead of sort of like making out with a beetroot every morning to get that nice, <laughs> nice pinky smoocher you desire. Uh, I highly recommend making your makeup with real ingredients. And to that end, you should check out my book. It's called Make It Up. And it is a book entirely on how to make all your own cosmetics from awesome, safe, effective ingredients. So yes. Some of the stuff I see on Pinterest just outright makes me laugh. I'm sort of like, what on earth? Um, just, I guess th this one is just sort of use your common sense when you see products on Pinterest that sort of make you go, that seems too good to be true. I'm like, it probably is. I saw one where they had this before and after picture of a woman. The woman in the first picture was, I don't know, probably about 70, it looked like she'd had quite a bit of sun exposure over her life. And the next picture must have been her grandchild because it was a picture of somebody who was maybe 19 years old. And this pin was asserting that this woman had achieved this transformation by completely packing herself in mist garlic for 20 minutes once. Um, just, what? Like, <laughs> these sort of things, like, you just kind of have to laugh at them. It's like, there's, no, just, no. Like, I guarantee that this woman was probably safe from vampires for the remainder of her life. Uh, but, like, what? To finish off, I wanted to talk about the biggest myth on Pinterest, and this is this notion that you can create absolutely everything that you need from a handful of simple kitchen ingredients that will do absolutely everything you'd ever want them to do and have no weaknesses whatsoever. So these ingredients are usually coconut oil, baking soda, apple cider vinegar, cinnamon, turmeric, oats, beeswax, aloe vera, tea tree oil, and then, you know, there's a couple other ones sort of floating around there, everything from like, you might see garlic occasionally pop up or like olive oil. And I totally get it, right? You are new to DIY skincare, you don't want to sink a ton of money in it, but you, you, you want to sort of dip your toes in there, you want to dabble a little bit. And so you find this recipe that purports to be this like amazing exfoliating scrub or deodorant or something, and you already have all the ingredients. And how exciting is that, right? Because 
now you have a new use for these ingredients that you already paid for, so that's awesome, and you already are familiar with the ingredients, and you already trust them, and feel good about their safety, and so it's great. You can just like go right downstairs and make it right away, and ta-da, and that's awesome, right? But <laughs> all of these ingredients have both strengths and weaknesses, and I find that coconut oil especially, people love to say that it's good for everything. You can use it for bug bites and you can use it for deodorant and you can use it for hair masks and you can use it for wounds and you can use it for soap and you can use it for moisturizer. And like technically kind of, but I think you're going to be really disappointed with it in a lot of those applications. And there's a lot of other plant-based oils and ingredients that would do a lot of those jobs better. So for instance, coconut oil is one of very few oils that can penetrate the shaft of our hair and it is pretty much irreplaceable in cold process soap making because it gives soap this wonderful big fluffy bubbles. But when it comes to using it as a moisturizer on its own, I find I'm really not that fond of it. It tends to clog pores, which is generally not a thing that I want. And it's quite like a thin oily oil. So I find here in the climate that I live in, it's just, it like is just not that stellar of a moisturizer. It tends to leave my skin really, really oily, but not sort of any more hydrated. I get no relief from dryness using coconut oil as a moisturizer. So it has its strengths for sure, but it also has its weaknesses. And sort of asserting that it's the be all and end all, you know, you don't need any other ingredients, I think is really setting people up to be very disappointed with their homemade skincare. Another ingredient that tends to get holy grail status on Pinterest is baking soda. You don't have to look very far to find a pin that shows a woman looking 45 years younger because she used a baking soda scrub once because it's magic, right? And unfortunately, Baking soda is actually really bad for your skin. I have been doing a bunch of research into this recently and was kind of appalled to learn that I have been horrifically misled and have in the process also probably misled several of you. Baking soda has a very high pH. It's kind of like eight or nine, depending on how diluted it is, but it's very, very basic, like so. Our skin has a pH of about 4.7 and it has a natural protective layer on it that helps Generally, do all the things that you want your products to do. It helps sort of prevent acne, lock in moisture, keep your skin just generally like happy and looking nice and healthy. And when you are repeatedly assaulting your acid mantle with something really, really basic, you're going to destroy it and damage it and compromise it. And when you do that, you leave your skin open to a whole host of things I'm pretty darn sure you don't want your skin open to. Everything from dryness and flaking and irritation to sensitivity to acne, like, Using baking soda as a facial scrub is actually a really, really, really bad idea, but it's all over the internet. So please, please stop doing it. I will link to some awesome resources about this below. But that's not to say that baking soda doesn't have strengths. Baking soda in a bath bomb is amazing, right? You have the basic element reacting with the acidic element, usually citric acid, and you have this like super fun bath time experience. So it's not a uniformly evil ingredient, but it's not the be all and end all holy grail of skincare that Pinterest would sort of have you think that it is. What I'm trying to say is this, no ingredient is the be all end all fix everything ingredient. Everything has its strengths and weaknesses. Now, we of course, we already know this in our kitchen. Like I love olive oil for sauteing onions or for perhaps nicely dressing a salad, but I'm not going to use it instead of milk in cereal because it has its strengths, sauteing, and its weaknesses, pretending to be milk, right? So definitely understand that skincare ingredients are the same way. Some of them are amazing for anti-aging and some of them are amazing for acne, but I've definitely found that some of the oils that are amazing for acne, like evening primrose oil, are really, really heavy. So that's a weakness along with their strength. Everything has strengths and weaknesses. So as much as it's lovely to think that <laughs> you can throw out every product that you've ever bought and replace it with stuff that you already have in your kitchen, if you do that, I know you're going to be really, really disappointed with the end results. You're eventually going to give up and you're going to go buy something again because you're kind of maybe sick of smelling like a coconut all the time or that turmeric foundation that you're wearing is dyeing your skin yellow. <laughs> if you've been dabbling with DIY skincare with really simple sort of kitchen recipes and you want to step it up a notch, I can't recommend signing up for my DIY skincare for beginners course enough. So I'll throw the link on uh, signing up for that in the description box below. But yeah, if you want to get a little deeper into DIY skincare, kind of maybe go from like dipping your toes into like maybe up to the ankle, I can't recommend this course enough. 
All right, well, those are some of the biggest sort of myths and misconceptions that I see about DIY skincare on Pinterest. I'd love to hear about some of the ones that you've seen because this is definitely not an exhaustive list by any stretch of the imagination. But thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, check the description box below for links to more information on loads of the things that I have been talking about today. And yeah, I will see you next time.